Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to do a detailed flip through of all of the prototypes that I made for the new add ons for the Basically Amazing Foundations. It is the Basically Amazing Charming Decorative Edge, the Basically Amazing Graceful Decorative Edge, and the Basically Amazing um, Scrap Journal. I will have timestamps and or if you want to call them chapters now, apparently you can now make them chapters where you can see on the line under the video or in the video, you can see where there's different um, timestamps in the video. So if you want to, you can jump to whichever one you want to see uh, the most detail about. If you have no interest in seeing this one, then you can hop to the next one and so on and so forth. So I will have that linked um, as well. So if you want to jump around, feel free. Okay, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. All right, next up, this is the scrap journal. So this looks like this. This is what, this is a basically amazing scrap journal add-on. So what this is, is it goes with the foundations and they are mostly mats uh, for the foundation pages. And then there's a lot of extra stuff. So this paper collection is Jane's Memoirs and somebody told me the links that I put um, in the video description a few videos back weren't working out. It's probably because they're sold out. So I would try Dreams, etc. I have that link down below as well uh, to see if maybe she can get a hold of Jen Bishop. She She's the one who uh, designed this paper collection to see if she can maybe get her hands on it. So... So anyway, so there's the back of this one. I just put one of the labels. I actually finished this on my birthday, October 31st. Finished this album. Um, yeah, so there's the photo corner decorative edge. I did use Graceful with this one, you guys. Just so you know, I used the combination of the Basically Amazing Foundations, the Scrap Journal, and the Graceful decorative edge. There is some ribbon or lace or no I think it's ribbon a little bit on the edge there just for a little bit of interest and over here I put a little bit I cut I sliced this right where that book is and I stuffed some of that same trim there it just looks cute and then I added this little set of keys that are on a bulb clip that I think I rusted these are rusted too um, I have a video on how uh, I rust stuff I will link it up in the cards and down below if you want to check it out. Super simple. You could use alcohol. You could use anything. You could use alcohol ink to make things look rusted. You don't have to actually physically rust something. Um, there's that decorative trim there. And then I did little photo corners in the top. So it's just super pretty, right? And so I don't know what I did, but there's like a lump right here. And obviously something was attached to something when I matted the back of this and it bothers me. I, I mean, I don't know. It's like a boil <laughs> or something. It's just, ugh, it bothers me. Okay, so, but also before I matted this, I had put some seam binding around to use as the closure. So it's underneath the mats, both front and back. Okay, and I left a generous amount because I wasn't sure um how much i wanted to keep in or on the album so i just kind of left it so this one is i'm using the i'm using the elastic binding again that's linked down below super easy to do you guys super super easy i love it and on the inside cover here i accidentally <laughs> matted it before i put any paper down so you can kind of see the um, cardboard, cardboard, the chipboard under there. It, anyway, it happened. It was an accident. And then after I finished the album, I just put a bunch of different odds and end pieces together. Like I think these are, you can mat these with a three by four photo. They're just a bunch of the leftover um, large cutoff pieces. I just cut down so that you could put a three by four photo on there if you want, or, or they might not be. Maybe not every piece is the same size. Photo mats and extras, I put a little one of the square labels there. And then um, there's one of the little smaller matchbooks where I added a bunch of the tiny little leftover pieces. 
in there. And then these are larger. These are for four by six photos. Oh, well, look, that's a, I don't know what that is. That's for a three by four photo. Well, anyway, so these are just little extra cut off pieces. I just stuck in this, this mat here is one of the mats for the basically amazing script journal so it's it's the a size that has a a slot section one long slot slot, <laughs> slot <laughs> section <laughs> um so i just thought i would share that in my facebook group also wanted to share in my facebook group there there was a post about the colors uh, that are on the labels that are on the uh different size labels and they matched them up to some distress inks which is totally fine i don't have a problem with that at all but i cannot confirm that those are the exact same colors for two reasons one i didn't use distress inks to create these colors <laughs> and two everybody's printer is different so um, if you're in my Facebook group and you saw that post, don't automatically assume that they're going to match what your printer prints out because I cannot confirm that um, at all. But it, it's, it wasn't a bad idea. Uh, the person who made that post, it was, a, it was a good idea. It just, I cannot confirm that that's exactly what um, colors match the, the printout. Okay, so then there's that. And then this is cute. I made this, uh, I'm not sure why this is here. Oh, no, that's not it. That's I, was, I got that new paper trimmer, that Tim Holtz deckled edge paper trimmer, uh, but that's not what I used. Or is it? It might have been on one side, maybe. No, I just tore this. I'm not sure what this was for, but here it is, all the same. I don't know why it was there, but <laughs> this is the large cutoff piece. Um, when I ran one of the pieces through my printer, this was the large cutoff piece. So I literally folded it in half, did a tag shape with my corner chompers, poked a hole in the middle to make it look like a tab, and then I added all of these loose pieces of coffee stained paper. They're not sewn in, it's just literally tied around so you can remove these if you like. And then there is one of the small matchbook that's included in this uh, the scrap journal template and then there's a bunch of little cut off pieces like this says Jane Austen there's some of the um, leftover that's coffee stain this was from the paper collection like a fussy cutting piece a fussy cut piece um, and look at this this was just a scrap and I kind of fussy cut around that flower and I was going to use it for something and didn't but you know you just include these little things and they can be used in uh, in throughout the album so if you just think about things like that, um, that can be used in the future. You know, you can just add them into things like this, but it's cute to look at, but it's also functional and right at your hands. You know, right where you can grab onto it. Right where you can grab onto it. Right at your fingertips. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> right at your hands. Mm. <laughs> anyway, that was just an idea. Another idea to make the um, large cutoff pieces more useful. Okay, let me situate my album here. I might have to prop the front cover up right there. Okay, so this very first book, this is the D-sized main base page. So this I made into a journal. And I think this one is sewn together. This one is sewn together. I don't think any of the rest of them are. But this one actually is sewn together. But I wanted to point out too that there's all four sizes of journals are in here. But I only have three fins, okay? I had taken and made a band with my elastic, made a, a, a core, a band, a, you know what I'm trying to say, like, <laughs> whoops. You know, you take a piece of elastic cording and you tie a knot. Um, I'm sure these have a name, I just can't think of it. And I'm trying to do this really quick. Of course, it's taken longer than it should, right? Where you just make something like this and you slip one end on one side uh, in one journal and one end on the other journal and then you slip both of those through the elastic in the, in the binding. So that gives you a space you, where you can add more journals to that one elastic. Um, and you can probably do that again. You could probably make another set 
and slip it through just like that because elastic is very forgiving. Um, so, you know, it's very giving. You can stretch it pretty good. Um, so you can keep adding journals that way. Okay. So this one, um, again, is sewn. And, oh, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. I have a whole big collection of large book pages um, because this, this, whoa, I better be careful. These um, albums, the Basically Amazing templates are very big. So you need bigger things. So this is the ledger that I keep referring to, my giant ledger. Look, it is huge. I wish I knew exactly what size it was. It might be 11 by 17. Let me see. I've got an 11 by 17 piece of paper over here. Um, I've been coffee staining the 11 by 17 paper and wrapping my covers uh, of the Basically Amazing. Every single one of them um, have been made with the same method as I've made all five of the albums we made before with just the foundations. So all these covers are made the exact same way. I just covered them with my coffee stained paper. Uh, no, it's not quite that big, but it looks like it's probably like 10 by... 15 and a half, maybe 10 by 16. Yeah, this is yeah 11 by 17. So it's super, super large, and I have the whole, I have the whole book. And you know, I've got really bad allergies, and I researched did a lot of research because I wanted this ledger so bad. Um, I did a lot of research because it smelled like mold and mildew, and you know, old books. This one's over 100 years old. 100 and might be 110, 115 years old. It's really, really old, and it's so cool. It's got so many different, um, so many different handwritings, and it's just, I don't know, it's just super, super cool. I love it. Anyway, did a lot of research, and I have had this book in my freezer. I have two refrigerators. I have one in our kitchen, and I have one in our basement, and in our basement, it's got a huge freezer that we don't really use. So, but anyway, that, I've put this book in a very large, large, large Ziploc bag and I put it in the freezer. I might have even put some baking powder in there. I don't remember. But it, it's still even in there now, and I've had it for well over a year, maybe even longer. It's been in there that long. But anyway, so every once in a while, I'll go grab some some pages so but when I take them out I take them out as a unit so if I wanted to sew it into a signature I totally can so all right so I wanted to show you that so anytime I come across an old book oh look at these pages these uh, someone sent me these um, a long time ago Ruby I'm pretty sure it was Ruby that sent me these a long time ago and I, I kind of hoarded them um, because I love old ledgers so much, but now that I've got my big, big, big ledger, <laughs> I can, I can use these a little bit more. But anyway, so I've got like old, uh, encyclopedias and, um, that, that's an old, oh, a ledger, but it's a different, it's like a graph ledger. Um, just different, just different things. Old, old, old stuff. Books that are falling apart, big papers, deli papers, uh, wallpapers, glycine paper, yeah. So I've been gathering for a long time. So I've got a whole thing full of things that I can use for these large albums. All right, so what, I got sidetracked. What was I talking about? Oh, this, this ledger paper. On this ledger paper, I used, I used flexible uh, modeling paste or molding paste, modeling paste, I think is what it's called. It's a gel medium, but what I, li I like the flexible one because I don't want it to crack off. You could if you want, I used a stencil, so that stencil is a Tim Holtz stencil, I'm pretty sure. I don't have it out right now, but um, you could use just gesso or white acrylic paint or craft acrylic paint, whatever, but I liked the feel of it and I wanted it to be flexible, so that is why I used the flexible modeling paste and we've used it before way back when um, and I did have to reinforce this piece because it cracked because the ledger paper is really old and when you fold it in half it cracks so I had to put some washi tape on there right so there's some coffee stain paper this is from an old um, phone book 
that you put your own, you know, information in. More coffee stained. This was coffee stained envelopes that I did, like junk mail envelopes. And I just kind of made them into a, a whole, I um, took two envelopes and made them into one piece and sewed them in just like that. See, it's just, um, I think these were like return envelopes for junk mail or something. But anyway, so I added those in, just coffee stained paper. So this is like a traveler's notebook style or junk journal style journal. Or it could just be a pretties, and you know, just whatever you want it to be, it can be. There's the other side of that ledger paper. And then this is the, um, what's it called? Jane's Memoirs Paper Collection by Blue Fern Studio, Jen Bishop. So there's one. And I do clip it on the top just to keep it closed. If you clip it on the side, sometimes it, it wiggles loose. So I like to clip it on the top. I guess you could use some seam binding and wrap it. This seam binding was from, it was either the Wonderlust or the Remnants where I had colored three different white. I, I made the white seam binding into three different colors. There was a pink, a blue, and a green. I wish I could remember exactly. I mean, I, if I went back there and looked, I would be able to tell you. But um, anyway, it was just left over and I'm just using what I have. So this is the D size, right? So. Four by six portraits can fit onto the D size. And then this is the B size right here. So there's the, this is like the main base page, right? Of the D size. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> of the B size. And then I made two of those into the journal covers. And I did um, corner chomp the corners of the book so that the elastic has some place to sit just like we did just like we did for the binding piece where we notched that corner there for the elastic to sit in so it didn't bulge out. So you wanna do the same thing for your journals and for your scrapbook pages. Okay, so, and then there's a, I did this one. This is just a little flower. Um, I used the, this. I was using this little palette we made a long time ago. And what's really funny, you guys, and I, this was such a quinky dink. <laughs> you remember these palettes? These were from the Wanderlust that we made. And I'm pretty sure there's probably a video for that. And if I have room in my cards, I'll put it up here and in the description box below. But we made a block of watercolor paper, right? Um, some of you may remember. Well, I painted this. This was two years ago. I painted this little picture, this little flower, which is adorable, right? It was on uh, November 14th, 2018. I painted this flower November 14th, 2020. So I found that a little peculiar and quinky dinky. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought it was so cool. It was a complete accident. A complete, um, what's the word? There's a word for that, serendipitous, maybe, or is that the right word? Well, let me, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think the right word is. <laughs> but give me a thumbs up too if you like that. That is just so cool. But anyway, so um, part of junk journals and traveler's notebooks and making your own little beautiful creations is you can use them for whatever you want. So you can make a journal that has everything in it that you could possibly want. This one is not sewn together, so things can be removed out of here. Like this watercolor paper can be removed. Um, so what I try to do is I try to put a whole different selection of things that you can put in these. Um, you just have to make sure that they're big enough. Well, not every page has to be big enough, but anyway. Um, so that's watercolor paper, and there's some coffee stained paper. There's more of that ledger paper. And then this, I just folded it up so it can be a pocket. Or it doesn't have to be. If I decide I don't want that to be a pocket, I can literally tear it at the bottom because you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but you can see how raggedy it looks down here. It's because when I folded it up, it cracked. So I, if I do use it as a pocket, I'm going to have to reinforce that. Um, and then I can tear it out of the book, or I can tear it at the bottom and just have it as a loose page. So lots of options there. This piece here, this page here, I, in my mock-up that I showed you when I was showing you the this one, right? I... Um, had pages like this that I'd made 
with when I sewed, I took the big paper and I folded it to make pockets and I, excuse me, and I sewed the little pockets, super cute. There's just a, there was a piece left over from the paper collection. I just matted it with a three by four add-on photo mat. This is some scrapbook paper. I believe this is from Hobby Lobby, Paper Studio brand. Some more coffee stain paper. This is from a book. This one was in my mom's collection. It is a, um, I'm trying to see, electric, electric, <laughs> eclectic, eclectic, eclectic picture book. I think that's, a, I'm trying to see it from here, but the lights are too bright. Um, but anyway, I thought that was cute to add. That would be fun um, to add pictures or if a smaller picture you could add there. Um, I don't know, I just thought it was cute. Or uh, I had your picture there on that paper. This was some of the cutoff pieces. Or no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. This was a cutoff piece that I just folded it in a different way. You could totally make it into a fold out or a pocket or tear it off and use it somewhere else. But this is not sewn in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that bother any of you this is not sewn in at all so anything can be removed there's the other part of that yeah it's called wooden fence paper studio so you could totally put a picture over top of that and that's gone right you can put a picture there or if you have one this way um, and you could journal there's the other pocket look at this cute little charm look at this is that not adorable can you see I can't I don't want to pick the whole book up but it's a cute little sparkly charm um, it was like something, I'll have to show you when we go to make, um, the journal, but it was something I found at Hobby Lobby, I'm pretty sure. And then here was a large cutoff piece. I was going to make it into a tag, but I ran out of time. So that's, um, I didn't make it into a pocket. I just have it clipped with a paper clip with a tiny little Tim Holtz paper clip. And then here's one of the pockets from the Graceful Edge. Um, I just added, it's the smaller pocket. I just added it on. You could... Put a bunch of photos or whatever you would like in there. There's the other side of that watercolor paper. And then here's the other side. Of, this is the back cover. So you can see where I attached the two together by that long tab. So that was the first fin. So both of these are on the first fin. And you could probably still add more. And then here is the second fin. I did the same thing. So this is the... C sized album and this is the A sized album they're journals and I did a band and put them on one um, one elastic on this fin so here's the C size I don't think I put much in here um, there's that book paper again the, uh, the eclectic series the eclectic picture oh, I don't know I can't say it from here this is from another book this one is a Oh, do I have that one sitting out? Wildflowers book? Um, yeah, I think it was a while. I did use that paper trimmer there, this deckled edge paper, paper trimmer. This new one by Tim Holtz. Um, I thought it was a little bit bigger. I, I thought we were going to be able to put a the whole, you know, the long side of the pages for this size album in here, but you cannot. Um, but you can do smaller pieces and another thing that I noticed is um, this top part here isn't very decally De decally decally is that a word I don't know so you need to if you're like if you were gonna trim this photo down well let's do it let's let me just show you uh, this is from a printer that I have that I'm not quite ready to share with you guys yet because I'm not sure if I like it or not I'm still playing around with it but it has extra pieces that you're supposed to tear off. So if I put it down here and trim that piece off, right? That looks nice, right? So, but then I'm gonna push it up a little bit. And if I push it up to the top and trim it, this is what it looks like. So half of it's deckled, half of it's not. So you want to, if you, if yours is like mine, I don't know if mine is just different, I don't know. But if yours is like mine, you want to come down to the bottom edge. Because it's really pretty. I mean, it's a really nice edge. I like it a lot. I got it because I thought it would be fun, too, to do the photo mats. Because, you know, the old-time vintage-y, you know, photos. 
have that deckled edge that the black and white photos I thought that would be super pretty but anyway okay so there's my thoughts on that <laughs> okay and there's another little paper clip and it has a little dream catchers charm on there um let's see here's some more these are not so man this one I don't have much in okay and then where's the where let's see where did I add these two together oh is this um Oh, this is not. This one is, this is the 12 by 12. I don't think it's the full 12 by 12 piece. Uh, but I traced the album cover or the main base page onto here and folded it in half. So this one I didn't have to suction together. And I wonder, did I do the, did I section this one together? I thought I did all of them. I guess I didn't. Nope, this one, same thing. I just traced the one side on there and folded it in half. Okay, so there's that. Alrighty, so I showed, I showed you guys this cute little, it's a bookmark, but it's a tag. It's both. It's a bookmark tag that I have some dried uh, lavender from my yard, and I, I tacked it down with a little bit of glue, and then I ran it through the laminator um, just to keep it safe. There's nothing on the back. You know, you can see where the stems are. But um, the way I dried this lavender is I literally put it in between pages, and a heavy encyclopedia and I have like four or five stacked on top of each other that have a bunch of flowers and stuff from my yard so that's how I dried those and dried them flat and then there's a paper clip this paper clip is from the it was Wanderlust when we did the Wanderlust um, hybrid album which is kind of the same concept it's just smaller and a little bit different um, the Wanderlust is but anyway so that paper clip was made during that time Here's one of the floating pockets with an insert under this little paper clip. So this one here is put together uh, by the long tab of the main base page of the A size album. Okay, and then I did some more of that. This is that flexible modeling paste that I used uh, in a stencil over here on there. Isn't that pretty? I just think it's pretty. And there's another piece of watercolor paper. And then this paper here is part of the scrap journal digital paper that's included in the scrap journal. I double-sided printed. This is the 11 by 17 file. Um, and I love it. And this paper, it is, well, it's cardstocky. It's thin cardstock. This is 60 pound cardstock. It's the same hammer mill but it's 60 pound and I kind of digging it for the pages. Um, I like it. I really do. Then here is some handmade paper. This was in my mom's stash and it's old. Um, it's a whole book of it. And then there's some coffee stain paper. There's some more of that nice big ledger paper and here's some more of that uh, stenciling down here with the modeling paste. This was from a uh, month's flower book. I think this too was in my mom's stuff. But it was something she'd already been digging in, so uh, she had separated some pages out. Um, and I think this one might have been separated into two pages because I put washi tape. This one was from a big encyclopedia. And then there's some of that Edith Holden. I've got um, I've got one of her books. I have two, two books. Um, there's an Atlas of the World map. There was just a page from a book. This is that rhodia paper. This is from that painted, let me show you that one. Painted Garden, A Year in Words and Watercolors by Mary Wooden. My mom had bought two of these. So, um, so anyway, this was also the fussy cut image from this one. It came from this book. I am almost certain. I, am I wrong? Am I wrong? No, I'm not wrong because there's the top of the page. <laughs> Do you, are you guys like me? You can't remember anything after you've done it. You can't remember how you did it. Um, and this is from another book. This one is from another floral book. Can't think of the name of that either. There's the center. And then, obviously, the other side. These are not sewn in, so they can be moved around easily. 
Um, okay, you guys, I just filled up a memory card. It is now where I have decided I'm gonna have to break this video up into two or three parts. So what I might do is do uh, the flip through, detail flip through on the charming decorative edge, the detail flip through on the graceful decorative edge, and then the detailed flip through of the scrap journal. So that's the case. I'll just release them back to back, um, one each day, you know, back to back, and then I'll have the link to um, the other ones in the description box below. Goodness gracious. I did not realize how much I was talking or how much I was going to show you guys. Anyways, okay. So I put some more um, of the modeling paste there on this page. Look at how pretty that is. It says May. So how fun would that be to use the month's pages in like a bullet journal, like you make your own bullet journal. That'd be fun. All right. Um, and this page, I need to actually take it out and do it again. I did reinforce the bottom here with some masking tape, and it kind of blends in, but it looks like I should have done the whole thing. So, there's some more of that handmade paper. And then there's the other side of the printed digital paper that's included in the scrap journal. The other side of the watercolor. And then on the back side here, there are two slots so this is one of the mats that's included in the scrap journal where you cut the slots out and you can um tuck things in just like that so here's a postcard from the scrap journal and then here's some bits and pieces left and some photo mats that i had and matted uh, one of them but I really like, I really like these, you guys. So this was printed onto some of my paper that are included in the scrap journal. So there's one, and then here's a four by six photo that's um, been matted with some of the paper collection. And then here's the large um, matchbook. These are all large cut off pieces, I believe. Except this one, I'm not sure why this one's torn like that. This is the coffee stain paper. Um, but this is the paper that's included, right? That's part of the digital paper. Super simple. And then here's the back of that one. Okay, so that was basically, if you were just making journals, that was two fins. There's two journals, two uh, scrap journals to each fin. So, and then here's kind of where the hybrid part, well, that's hybrid too, because you don't normally... When you're scrapbooking, you don't normally have journals like this, but I've been incorporating journals into my scrapbooks for quite some time now, and I really like it. I think it's a really useful thing to do. That way, you, if you don't like your handwriting or you don't like to put your handwriting all over pretty paper or you put a photo down and you don't want to, like, scribble, you know, down here or whatever, you can make yourself a little journal and tuck it in a pocket, and there all the information that you need will be in the journal instead of out front and center where everybody can see. So this is the last fin, and this has removable scrapbook album, mini album style pages in it. So I used the, this is the graceful edge, um, but this is a little pocket. So this is the, actually the D sized uh, doors, right? So it's a little pocket. I love that. And then this is some old stationery that I did a wax seal with a little rose on it we used this rose in one of the last albums that we made and this has magnets on it and then here's one of the file folders and look at this little paper clip with the little key is that not precious is it closed yeah there's nothing in it it's just but i printed directly onto the pattern paper and then on the back side this is another envelope that was uh, sent to me. I just coffee stained it, put a label over top of the address. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Did I even cut it anywhere to where I can, because when I coffee stained it, it kind of glued it all back together. <laughs> but there it is. And then here is some script that I printed onto coffee stained paper, and then I printed it with black laser and then foiled, right? So this is a belly band. So this is actually the main base page D. And the foundations and it's my belly band so in the belly band is one of the inserts and it's coffee stained on one side and then this is some really old 
notebook paper. This actually came out of the notebook that I got my mom's handwriting from. And you can kind of see a little bit from where she wrote out different little notes. You know, like if you took a pencil and went like this, you'd be able to see it. But anyway, so I just kind of, and you can see I didn't glue it all the way down. It's just around the edges. But I thought that would be really fun to include. You could put photos on one side and journal on the other. Um, I thought that would just be fun. I liked the I liked the torn from the spiral notebook. I liked that edge being there. And then back here, this is the letters background, and I printed a shades of color over top of it just to see what it looked like. And and it's pretty cool. It looks okay. Um, I used it, and so. And then on this side, this is some of the paper included in the scrap journal digital paper. There's my mom's handwriting. And then there's some foiled book corners, book corners, photo corners. Here is another little pocket and the page, the main base page is from the foundations and it's matted with the ledger paper. Here's another one of those little booklets. This here is gesso and you can see how it kind of smeared out and I, that, that doesn't bother me, but um, I did use gesso there. And this is just like a selection of the different papers that I'm using. There's that old stationery. It's so pretty, guys. And it's got this like foiled edge. And then there's some coffee stain, coffee dyed, coffee tea dyed paper. So this was printed directly onto the Jane's Memoirs paper. And I tied it closed with some Baker's twine. And so this is one of the 11 by 17 pages. I just used the whole page. Well, had to trace out the main base page. Okay, and then here is the second page. It's a little flip here. There's the postcard background. There's Jane's memoirs, and this was from the main base uh, foundations. Uh, they basically amazing foundations, and I just chomped the two corners. And then this too main base. This was uh, the main base page D, and then this is the a pocket that's on that page on the foundation. And then two little photo corners with the um, with the uh, graceful edge. And then the large matchbook style. There's a little label there. Okay, right? So easy. So simple. There's magnets in here. There's nothing in, oh no, it's open. I thought it was a pocket. I did that last time when I was showing you the add-ons, huh? <laughs> I thought it was a pocket. Again, made so many. This here, this page here is I printed the letters background onto coffee stained paper and then I printed uh, one of the shades of color, one of the pinks over top. Um, I didn't continue that throughout the album but I went ahead and used it so it kind of looks kind of neat. I don't know how well you can see that. It looks kind of neat. And then this is one of the mats that's in the scrap journal and one of the tags, right? Well, it's not really a tag. It's just a piece of ephemera that I made into a tag. And then this, this uh, whole reinforcement, I used uh, gilding paste or um, gilding wax. What's it called? Gilding polish. I used gilding, <laughs> gilding polish to make that color. And again, one of these uh, vintage stationary pieces that I put a wax seal on. But you could put a bunch of photos here because there is magnets here, so it's keeping everything closed. So here is the elastic. Again, these are removable. They're not permanent. I can literally take these out. I can move these around. I can make necessary adjustments when I need to. So this is one of the encyclopedia pages. And then I covered up one of the pictures. I forget what was under there, but it didn't have anything to do with anything, and I liked it. This was one of the ephemera pieces from the collection, the Jane's Memoirs collection. I just thought it was cute there. Here is a flip out page. This is a pocket page. So this is from the Jane's Memoir paper collection. That's the shades of color. There is the uh, graceful edge. It's really delicate. Can you see? I don't know how well you can see. It's hard for me to see in the monitor. There is another one of those match book pockets. And it only has one thing in it. Well, I'll be. Um, it's got one of the circle labels, and this is a large cutoff piece. Um, I'm not sure. I guess I had another plan for that, and I just didn't finish. 
this was a large cutoff piece that I matted or I backed it with coffee stained paper. And then this was a large cutoff piece, and I just fussy cut that out right there. Or no, this wasn't a large cutoff piece. This was a leftover piece. I just thought it was cute. Whoops, I just bumped you. So those three are in there. That flips out. There's another one of those belly bands. This was an ephemera piece. I think I started to cut this out for some reason. I actually did get it all the way fussy cut out, but then I put it back. I didn't like the way it looked um, as much as I liked the white being in there, but isn't that, do we love that? I love that. This is one of the shades of color. This paper here is from the um, digital paper that's in the scrap journal. And then that's one of the ephemera pieces. Isn't that just so pretty? I just love, and I love that graceful edge. It's just so pretty. And then this is a five by seven photo and I put, I backed it with some of the Jane's Memoirs paper. And I just love it. I just love it. This is matted back here. This is some of the paper and the digital papers included. And then I didn't put anything here and I don't remember why. Did I just run out of time? Probably. Probably, but this is one of the digital papers. Um, this was 11 by 17 size that I traced uh, out the page size and cut it down. And then here's one of the graceful edge pockets. There's some of the paper that's included, the digital paper. And then this is one of the inserts for one of the large envelopes that go in the graceful. Um, but you see how well these decorative edges work with the scrap journal. Oh, I just, I love both of them together. And then here's the back cover of that, or the back page of that. So both, there's two sections. There's like this section that can be removed and this section that can be removed. So the outer section has, again, has a page with these slot mats. There is one of the labels. There's just a postcard. I love this set of postcards. Um, I'll have to find them. I'll have a whole basket. When we go to make these, I'll have a whole bunch of stuff that I can show you. And then there's a postcard from um, this collection. I, I, I backed it. Oh, did I print it off like that? No, I, I glued it together. Um, I backed it with some of the paper in the collection. There's one of the uh, tags that you can write on, journal on, or put pictures on, whatever you want to do. Okay, and then what do we got here? This is one of the glassine envelopes. I haven't put a whole lot of them in throughout here, have I? Well, shoot, shooty doodle. I've got a whole bunch of them made up. I just don't have them in the journal. Um, but I printed a shades of color on one side, um, and then I printed the envelope on the other, so you can see it's fully the color that it prints out, so you don't have to line it or anything. So that's an envelope. It's part of the... Um, add-on art, art journal, <laughs> scrap journal. There's another insert from one of the large envelopes that I printed directly onto the pattern paper. Made it into a tag. And then on the back pocket here, we talked about that already um, previously, but it's just a bunch of leftover bits and pieces. Oh, there, there's a stamps that go with that paper collection that I just I love. I didn't use much of it, but... Um, Anyway, a bunch of little leftover scraps. There's some from where I um, foiled the script background from the black and white. All right, and some leftover cutoff pieces, some leftover ledger and leftover ephemera. All of that's back here. And I don't think I did anything to the back side, right? I already showed you that anyway. Okay, so there's that one. I showed you these, both of these mostly. I showed you these when I showed you the add-ons. These two here. But I guess I could talk about them again just real briefly in this video. Since I'm going to be breaking this up into several videos, I'll just go ahead and briefly touch on these again. Let's start with this one. So this I made using the B-sized, basically amazing album and the scrap journal. And this has, um, this is like an ephemera journal, right? So I had fussy cut this out from an old book. The paint, did I already put, no, here it is. I had fussy cut it out from here, the painted garden book, and put it onto some of the paper that comes with the scrap journal. And I just think it's lovely together. 
Isn't that pretty together? There's a label, and then there's some of that modeling, modeling paste uh, in that stencil. And I did go over it a little bit with speckled egg distress oxide. Um, it looks really, really pretty with this combination. And I don't think anything's on the back. Yeah, we talked about that. That's the speckled egg. I was going to do the covers in something that looked like that. But I changed my mind, although it looks really nice now. But when I first did it, I was like, eh, eh, I don't know. <laughs> so I put it on the back cover instead. So I put this on the front cover, and then I put that on the back cover. Because I was going to put this on the front cover. Anyway, so there you have it. And then the side looks like this. So there's the label, and then there's part of the paper that I cut out. It was on the same, or was it on the opposite page? But anyway, so there's that, and then it followed all the way to the back. Okay, so we've already went through this. So this is the elastic. This is two, the two-page elastic um, binding, right? So these are removable. These are not sewn together. So this is a bunch of ephemera. These are all printed off pages from the scrap journal mats. Those are holding my whole reinforcements. There's some photo corners. There's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of um, ephemeras that come with the scrap journal add-on. A bunch of tags, whole bunch of stuff, whole bunch of stuff in here. But we, yeah, we've already really looked at all of this. And then these are the sheets that I put the stickers. I printed off the labels onto sticker paper. There's Avery sticker paper, and then their scrapbook.com has a sticker paper. This one, I think, is scrapbook.com. It's, it's thick. It's a thicker paper. You could totally just use um, shipping labels. It's just thinner, so it's totally up to you. There's some of these circle ones that I put on here and some of the square ones. Right? So some of them are quite large. I mean, that's a really big, um, really big label. Right? You could put that on the front of your journals or you could put it under a photo or whatever. Whatever you want to do. Okay, so um, those are all in there, and then there's a bunch of the rectangle labels, the different sizes, and the squares, and the circles. These are all mats that are in the art journal. Oh my gosh, I keep calling it an art journal! That are in the scrap journal. There's a bunch of the postcards that are included in the scrap journal. There is the slides that are included in the scrap journal. These are included in the scrap journal. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, love, love. Yeah, too fun, too fun. So there's that one, and then this one has the add-on photo mats in it, the ones that I've printed off and just haven't used yet. I've used a variety of the different mats that are in the scrap journal. Um, these are pages that I got ready that I haven't used yet, but they're in here, but none of, nothing is attached, so things can be moved around easily, okay? Um, there's some more of the... Um, mats for the scrap journal and then this very last one is also holding add-on photo mats but I just used leftover pieces of vellum and sewed them on just to show you that you don't have to print off the mats and on the vellum and do all that slicing of all the slots and stuff you can just use scraps and make it these are all the different size pages except for the large because this is a b-size album um, but yeah you can just use scraps again not sewn in, so things can be moved around. You could take this section out and put it in the book that you're working in, whatever you wanna do. So I just wanted to show you that you don't have to print off the mats. You can totally just use your scraps and sew them on or glue them on or whatever. Um, and I still haven't added anything to the back there for the bigger stuff. So there's that one. And then I also showed you this one. This one is the A-size album. This again is my coffee stained. This is the Charming Edge. And then this is the Antique Papery paper. All right, there's a big pocket here. There is my vintage envelopes and inserts, and I may have mentioned this already, but I probably should have made this a bigger one. This should have been the A size, so this is the B size. They all fit in here, but man, it was snug getting. So these are all the ones that I've already put together, cut out, whether I was demoing it or I had printed off. See, I just taken some of them out already, um, where I've printed off the whole page or I printed off several different papers and was showing you different options in videos for whatever reason. These were already put together and ready to go, so they're in here. Um, 
And there's a there's a huge variety. There's three sets of the vintage envelopes and inserts, and they're all in here. Um, but I love them. I just love them. I use them in everything. They're definitely for me. If I didn't create them, they would be a very good investment um, to use in your in your album making. There's some more. These are all the vintage. So look here. You can see the slots, right? I guess you can see them over here too. But again, I guess you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. You can just use scraps. Um, again, removable. You can move these things around. It's, you could also, too, you could sew them together. They don't have to be removable. Totally up to you. It's your ephemera holder, your ephemera journal, your whatever you want to call it. It is yours. You do what you want with it. Um, there's some more of these slot pages, some more of the vintage envelopes. So they're all in there. Um, it does have a cover, even though it doesn't really need a cover per se, but I wanted it to have, so this is separate. Um, the front and back cover is separate from the rest of it. Um, it's not attached to anything. It's just in there. And then my build embellishments. These are, uh, there's, there's four sets of build embellishments. Each one of these books has two in each. So this is the A-sized uh, page, and these are sewn. Super fun. So I printed off the, this was, uh, I think the reason I had to back them with some more paper is because I printed these off on that 60 pound and for a cover, it was a little bit flimsy for uh, my cover. So I did this one on my labels. I did put, was this one of my misprint papers? It is. I'd accidentally printed the um, paper on the large, like the eight and a half by 11 sized file paper on the 11 by 17 paper. So anyway, I just printed over top of it <laughs> and decided to heck with it. I'm using it anyway. So these are all my build embellishments. Um, so that's one, two, three, and four. So set one and two is in this first section. This is the large, this is the A size. This is the largest size. Um, but yeah, it's really helpful and useful to be able to see. Like I had them in the binders before, but it had the clear, um, just what is that? I'm trying to see. Yeah, where, where I had the clear um, plastic pages that had the different slots, right? I couldn't put everything in there because it got too thick, but I had them, you know, split out like that. So it's nice to be able to see everything you have. So that's basically what this is. You can just, you can stick as whatever you need in here. Once you cut it out, if you cut out a bunch of stuff and you're like, oh, I didn't use this, that, or the other, or you just want it pre-ready to go. Um, yeah. And so these were the pages I printed. I printed them smaller so that I would know exactly what was on that page. So I just went ahead and added them in here. There's the elastic. So nothing is sewn in. It's all loose. You can change these order around or take it out completely. So yeah, all these little different build embellishments. Right, and there's different um, inserts, and there's even some postcards and stuff. Yeah, yep, yep. Lots of fun stuff to play with. All right, and then there's like again, it's like the sheets I printed off, and you can use the, you can use them smaller. Like if you print two to a page, or um, I think that's what this one was, two to a page. And look how cute those are. Those are perfect, cute little embellishments. I just love it. Okay. And then here again. There's, and you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see where I had printed the misprint. It stops here. But there's build embellishment set three and four. So let's say, um, let's say that I have more build embellishments that I want to add in here and I want to remove these out and put these in something else. I can totally do that. It's not sewn in. I'm not locked in that I made. I did all this work and I can only use it for one thing. I can use it, I can switch things out, I can move things around. That's what one of the things I love about this type of binding. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so this is set three and four, build embellishments. Um, I just love them. I just like looking at them. Right? So pretty. So, all the different, uh, all the different mats that are part of the scrap journal it's super easy to do i mean i've done them i've done it where we've done slot, like slots like this before on pages uh, but i will show you again how to do it it's so easy it looks harder than it is but it, and then i did like a little pocket on the back um, i'm not sure 
don't know if I covered the whole back or not. Yeah, it was already matted. I just added pockets so that way I could put large pieces of things, you know, if I had leftover bits. But yeah, so there is that. That is all of the prototypes that I have for you. And there, the, this one and this one are functional prototypes. So er, I'm, you're going to see a lot of these. Um, and I think I'm looking around to make sure I'm not missing something. And I think that's it. If that wasn't enough, I don't know, you guys. That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Okay, you guys, that is all I have for you guys for the scrap journal add-on, the Basically Amazing Scrap Journal add-on. I did have to separate these out into three. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do three. It's either going to be two or three videos. So for this video, um, I will link the other two videos below if you want to check those out. Um, I'm not going to redo intros and all of that. I don't think, yeah, I probably should. No, I'll just do part one, part two, part three. <laughs> I'm thinking out loud. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, there was just a lot to show you. There was a lot I created. There's a lot of different ways to use things. And I just wanted to share it all with you. So there'll either be two or three parts. And let me know what you think. Leave me comments. Give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. All that jazz. And we will be getting started soon on our first Basically Amazing Decorative Edge add-on album. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.